In this video, check out the stock intake, the equalizer, the trinity, the big plenum, and the high ram. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we got some really cool stuff. Who wants to see the Brian Tooley Racing Equalizer Intake Manifold, the Brian Tooley Racing Trinity Intake Manifold? Who wants to see what happens when we increase plenum volume? Does it add power? Who wants to see a comparison between the Holly High Ram and the Brian Tooley Racing Trinity Intake Manifold? Which one makes more power? Put her on! Yeah, this is going to be all the powers. What is it, vacuum line? Yeah, okay. <laughs> After running the stock intake, it was time for the equalizer from Brian Tooley Racing. We finally got it installed, got the throttle body on, and now we're ready to rock. Okay. Yeah. Intake swap. All over the place. Yeah. I saw that on some intake manifolds. A little spotted. You have some AN fittings or something that go in there? Uh, yeah. We need to look and see if we have some more. I had not ordered some spare stuff. I don't know if they were. It's something you can attach the hose to. Yeah, I think we got plenty of hose. It's just uh, the bulkhead feeding for the uh, valve cover, I think. Oh, okay. Is that what it is? It's not it's a, a. It's an ORB, like okay. 12 ORB. I think it's 12. After running the equalizer manifold, it was time to step up to the Trinity. We were curious to see how these two intake manifolds actually compared, and also how they compared to the high ram. Sometimes it takes a village. Right. After running the standard Trinity intake manifold, it was time to step up to the big boy plenum. <laughs> Massive throttle opening, got a little peephole up on the dyno, and ready to go. Right. Snuffle up, I guess.
It's like a Belanger, huh? Right. Yeah, big plenum. Actually, big plenum and big throttle body. Yeah. Okay, guys, now let's take a look at some of the intake manifolds offered by the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. We'll compare those to the LS3 intake manifold. Then I'm also going to compare the Trinity intake manifold to the Holly High Ram. So our test motor is a 427 stroker LS7. It had forged pistons in it, forged flat tops with valve reliefs. It had Trick Flow 255 CNC ported LS3 heads. I'm going to go ahead and show you the camshaft specs. It had a big camshaft in the big, actually a big nitrous cam. It worked well, allowed us to run lots of RPM for our test. It had inch and seven eighths long tube headers. It had the BTR shaft rocker set up and a valve spring upgrade to allow us to run this kind of RPM. So let's jump right in. And first we ran this 427. And by the way, all the tuning done by James Short, or Short Tuning. And also this motor, this high compression motor, ran, um, we ran E85 in all this testing. It's readily available where, where the guys from Brian Tooley Racing are. It's, it's cheap and expensive, and you can run lots of compression and lots of boosts or anything if you want to do that. So run first with the factory LS3 intake manifold and 90 millimeter drive-by wire throttle body. The combination produced 665 horsepower and 598 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we ran the first of our three uh, Brian Tooley Racing intake manifolds. This was the equalizer. We picked up a lot of peak power. Uh, the peak power jumped up to 706 horsepower, 706, 707 horsepower. So um, good peak power numbers, as we would expect from these short runner manifolds. You can see we ran it out to 7,500 RPM, and this thing was continuing to be basically a flat power output even past that. So if you wanted to go to 8,000, you should go to 8,000 and it, and the gains offered on um, the short runner intake manifold versus the factory intake manifold were big out at the top. I mean, we're looking at 55 to 60 horsepower gain, but that obviously doesn't tell the whole story. If we look at the power production of the long runner manifold below 6,100 RPM, like from 2,500 to 6,100 RPM, long runner manifold is obviously a better choice. I mean, I don't know why somebody would put together this kind of 427 and limit themselves to 6,100 or even 6,500 RPM. But it shows that the factory LS3 intake manifold works very well in that range, even on these bigger motors. So when I'm ever having a conversation with somebody and say, well, what intake manifold should I use? I'm like, look, decide what RPM range you are most interested in. And then pick your manifold accordingly. If it's sub 6,500 RPM, longer runners. If you're racing it and you're, and you're running this thing to 7, 7,500, 8,000 RPM, then you're going to want a shorter runner manifold. So pick the manifold for the RPM range that you want to run. This equalizer worked pretty well. Now let's take a look at the Trinity intake. Okay, we're taking a look at the equalizer intake manifold. So we remove that and install the BTR Trinity intake manifold. We're going to take a look at the dyno results there. So run again, once again, with our stock LS3 intake manifold, 665 horsepower and 598 foot-pounds. And much like the short runner equalizer intake manifold, the Trinity intake manifold kind of showed the same same type of results that we would expect from a short runner manifold. It made a lot more peak power. In fact, it made the most peak power of any of the intakes that we tested. It made 716 horsepower, but like the other short runner manifolds, peak torque was down. 
581, 582 foot-pounds down from 598 with the stock long runner intake manifold. We can take a look and see um, past uh, below 6,500. So the crossover point was a little earlier on the Trinity intake manifold than it was on the equalizer intake manifold. Uh, you know, let's say 6,000, if you were to run this thing from 6,000 to 8,000, this short runner manifold would work very, very well. And you'd make lots of power. In fact, 55, 60, 65 horsepower more than the long runner manifold. But once again, if you're looking at, uh, you know, power production, and you're concerned about power production below 6,000 RPM, in this case from 2,500 to 6,000, you need to pick a longer runner manifold because it's going to make a lot more average power production. So remember, choose the intake manifold for the RPM range that you want to run and you're going to do okay. But in addition to this intake manifold, or at least this plenum, we also ran this modified plenum. I'll go ahead and show you a photo of that. So we run, we want to find out what happens when we run, you know, increased plenum volume. So what does plenum volume do? So we're going to answer that. We ran this test. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the LS3 intake manifold. We will bring up our big plenum. And in addition to increasing the plenum volume, this one also increased the intake manifold or the throttle body size. So the opening on this was 125 millimeter throttle body. Uh, we, we ran 112 millimeter throttle body on it because we didn't have a 125 at the time of testing. But as you can see, it just, once again, I was disappointed in the increased plenum volume because it really didn't show a big power gain. What we showed was that, I mean, there's a, a little bit of wiggling there in the torque two to three foot pounds. Um, again, we see variations of one or two maybe from run to run. So I don't know that in, in looking at these curves, I would just say that these are the same and the plenum volume didn't do what I thought it was going to do. The plenum volume or the combination of plenum volume and bigger throttle opening, I thought was going to show power, you know, more power at the top. It showed one horsepower. Again, we're splitting hairs there. 717 horsepower versus 716 horsepower versus the standard size plenum. So once again, plenum volume did not really show itself to produce lots and lots of power, but I'm going to keep trying. But we want to take a look now at the... Um, so let's see, we're going to take a look now at the, the comparison that everybody kind of wants. This is the BTR Trinity intake manifold versus the Holly High Ram. And we once again can see what's going on with runner length. So we see that the, uh, the Trinity intake manifold made more power than the High Ram. We have 717 or 716 versus the High Ram was, um, let's see, 70. 706, 707, so about 10 more horsepower, and the BTR manifold made more power than the high ram from about 68 or 6900 all the way out. Again, shorter runners making power at the top of the RPM range, which we'd expect. The high ram did do better below that. Um, it had a, 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 a narrow gain from 5700 to 6500 and then below 5200 it offered uh, an increase in torque down there quite honestly they were the same down at 2500 because you're not really worried on this kind of combination what the power production is because that's probably all going to be taken up by stall speed or, or gearing if you're actually drag racing these things but if you look in the middle part of the curve from 3,200 to 5,000 RPM, the longer runner high ram did offer more torque production, which is kind of exactly what we would expect. But if you're looking for power out on the big end, the shorter runner uh, BTR intake manifold did very well. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. And I'll keep testing.